How we can create some super realistic renders in Enscape for SketchUp. In this tutorial, we will talk about it step by step, so let's get to work. I'm gonna start my job with setting out my environment, and you can see the all the assets and informations in my SketchUp 3D model. I have multiple scenes in here, and I can click on them to change my view. First of all, if you are a beginner, this is the Enscape bar in here. You can move it to this place and check out graphical setting in the general setting. I turned on the uh, NVIDIA Global Denoiser and it helps me to improve my render's quality and noise system. After that, I set out my assets from the uh, Enscape asset library in here and now I'm going to click on the uh, Start Enscape. It depends on your graphic card and your config or your system performance and it takes a little bit of time to load your environment and rendering setting and scene for you. So, I use Enscape 3.5.6 plus some version, and my SketchUp is 2023. So, first of all, this is the Enscape environment. In this place, we have the uh, collaborative annotation, not really useful in interior designs. BIM, which related to Revit and some other softwares for building information modeling. After that, we have VO management, Enscape online as a library, site context, which is really useful for urban design projects, and video editor. After that, we have rendering settings like the uh, screenshot, batch rendering, which helps you to check out your scenes and render them one by one. New ability on Enscape 3.5.6 is the V-Ray Scene Export beta version and helps you to create some V-Ray Scene files in here. We have Panorama and Exhibit Exports. So, time for the working with Enscape. I'm gonna start my job with the visual setting. So I want to reset all of my settings. And you can see the changes in here. I'm going to reset all of these windows because I want to talk about them step by step. So it's really important for me to check out my environment very well. The sky is not really important and let's get to work. First of all, if I press F on my keyboard, I can switch between my scenes in here. So I prefer to use, for example, scene number six, number five, number four, number three, and number two, for example, or number one. It completely depends on you. Each scene includes lighting and coordinate system. For example, if I click on the edit mode in here, I can see some useful settings about the lighting, sun angle, sun direction, altitude, and other things. If I click on the save option, I can save new setting, and if I click on the cancel, it will cancel for me. I prefer to use camera number 5, for example, in here. And now, I'm going to close this view management. So, time for the working with it. I'm going to close it in here, and I'm going to click on the visual setting. First of all, you need to add some safe frame for your render, but you don't know how. So, it depends on your resolution. First of all, I will go to the output window and change the resolution from Full HD or Ultra HD and the custom mode. And now I have 9020 to 9020 and it's the aspect ratio 101. So, if I click on the a safe frame in here, now I have some 101 aspect ratio. And I'm going to click on the visual setting in here, move the visual setting in this place. And I want to start my job with the styles. First of all, if I change my mood from the non mode to the white mode, I can see some white glue rendering in my job. And it's really helpful for creating realistic lights before final rendering. If you increase the outline option, you can create some outlines on your textures and your surfaces. And it really helps you for creating some type of graphical renders. But right now, I want to reset it. After that, time for the uh, perspective. If I change the perspective to the two-point or orthograph, 
I can create some new type of perspectives. But my pitch option in my camera is zero. So perspective and two point perspective in this camera shot is completely equal. So if I turn off the auto exposure, I can see some small changes in my area. And if I increase the exposure, I can make my screen more brighter. But right now I want to turn on the auto exposure and increase the exposure in some number about 56. One of the most important values in rendering is about field of view. Field of view helps you to zoom on your project and targets. So if I click on the field of view and reduce it as I can, I can see some changes in my job. So I prefer to focus on this area because it's really, I think, interesting for me. So if I type 36 degree, this is my final camera zoom in the field of view. So, I want to focus on this sofa or this arm shader, but I don't know how. So, if I use the uh, depth of field, make sure about that autofocus is off. And if I want to play with the focal point in here, I can see some shiny line in my environment. So, I'm going to move it near to this arm shader, for example, or maybe this table with this teacup in here. So I prefer to focus on this one. So 4.42 is enough. And in the depth of field, I will reduce it to some type of decade number. For example, if I decrease it, I can see some reducing in my blurness. So I prefer to use some value, for example, 9%. After all of this setting, now I can change my side from the white mode to the non mode. And now I have better view about my rendering. Next step is the image bar. If I click on the image bar, I can play with the uh, highlights. You can see this place on my carpet. And shadows. Look at these place. If I increase the shadows, I can see some more darkness in these areas. So it's completely works simple. But most of the time, if you want some fast rendering, you can use auto contrast. So check the auto contrast and it will completely check out your environment by the uh, Enscape AI. If you don't like this, you can turn off the auto contrast and play with the highlights by your own taste. For example, 36 for the highlights and I need a little bit more shadows in my environment. So I prefer to use some number about 22. Now I have better view about my job. After that, time for the effects. Motion blur only works for animations, so it's not really important in your rendering. But lens flare and bloom option work with each other. If I increase the bloom option, you can see some fadings in your edges and your lights. And if you increase the bloom option, you need to increase the lens flare to create some more artistic renders. So you can see some fadings in your camera in the center point and it's like the uh, mist in here. But right now I need some sharp render. So I will reduce the bloom option to the uh, 11 and lens flare to some number about 34. Now I have better view of my job. Wignate is related to your image corners. So if I increase the Wignate, I can see some darkness effect in my area. Right now, I want to use 56% and chromatic aberration related to your edges. Look at these edges in here. If I increase it to the 100%, I can see some RGB glitches in my edges. So I prefer to use the A0 because I need sharp edges. And I prefer to hold these numbers in here. About the saturation, if you don't like this type of color, you can increase the saturation to make your screen more alive or desaturate them. I prefer to use some number about 104%. And if I want cold render, I can increase the color temperature as I can. But right now, because we have sun angle and sun brightness in our environment, I prefer to use some warm color temperature. For example, 6000 Kelvin is much better. 
Next step related to the atmosphere. If I click on the sun brightness and increase it as I can, I can see some yellow bars in my environment. But right now it's too artistic. So if I want to make realistic render, I need to reduce sun brightness. So when I reduce the sun brightness, you can see some small changes in your colorization render. So I think 6% is enough right now. If I close this window in here and press F on my keyboard and click on the edit on my camera number 5, I can change my sun direction and sun power. So I will hold shift and right click and change my cursor. You can see some movements which related to shadows and some other things. And azimuth will be changed for you. If I hold Ctrl plus U and I, I can change the ascent direction, very simple and easy. I prefer to use some type of value like that, and I think it's really good for me right now. For example, something like this. And azimuth and altitude will be changed for us. So azimuth is about 163, and altitude is about 10 for example. And I'm going to press save. Now camera number 5 updated for me. So I have better view in my render in here and it's really better for me. So about the visual setting, I will move it in this place for example. And I will come to the uh, exposure. If I reset exposure, I can see some darkness. So 61% I think is good. I want to increase it like that. In the atmosphere, night sky brightness, not really useful in this case. So I will change it to some number about shadow sharpnesses. So look at these shadows in here. If I increase the shadow sharpness, I will have some hard shadows on my sofa, on my carpet. But it's a little bit artificial, not realistic. So 12% is enough because I need some soft shadows. Artificial light brightness related to your these self-illuminated light. If I increase it as I can, I can see some more brightness backside of this sofa. And I think it's really good. So I prefer to use 124 for it. Look at these areas under the sofa and these shadow places. I need some hyper light. In Lumion we have hyper light, but in Enscape we have ambient brightness which helps you to make your environment more brighter. I will increase the uh, ambient brightness like this and I can see some more brightness in the back sides. If I reduce it, you can see what really happened in back side of this armchair or sofa. For realistic view and result, I prefer to use some low value number, for example 26%. Final step is the skybox. Look at the outside. When I change the white ground to the white cubes, I can add some new type of source for my environment. And if I change it to the a desert, forest, and town, I can see some new type of HDRIs. But most of them, as a matter of fact, not really good quality. So I prefer to use white ground for my interior because I need only GI calculation. Density and variety and size amount related to the clouds and we don't want to talk about it right now because it's related to exterior rendering. In the main bar you can see other options and check them out. For the final step I will click on these option in here called view management. Camera number 5. And I think time for the uh, rendering. So I'm going to click on the uh, screenshot or batch render. So I have two ways for rendering. If I click on the batch render, I need to select my camera that I really want to render it. And after that I can press render. But right now, because I need some one shot rendering, I will click on the uh, screenshot, desktop, and save it on my desktop as the uh, PNG file. So I'm going to press save. It takes a little bit of time and light calculation will be over, so after that 
Enscape will export some super realistic image for you and it completely depends on your environment and 3D model details. Alright, after that I'm going to click on these render in here and finally this is my render. You can see the details. If we have some noises in our environment it's completely normal because I use some graphic card about GTX 1080 and I think it's completely normal. If you use RTX you can see better realistic renders so it completely depends on your system and PC config. Finally, if this tutorial is useful for you, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching and goodbye.